us. Uh, welcome to our time. Hello. You said you've got an itchy foot. What does yeah, that no, mean? Yeah, no, I don't. Yes, because when your palm itches, it yes. means you're, what is it, right for gain, left for lose. So what does it mean with your feet when they're itchy? These feet are made for walking. <laughs> Perhaps you're going on a trip around Australia. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> welcome to our time. It's lovely to have your company once again because on this episode... We are going to meet a fantastic local South Australian artist and we're going to find out about Sala Festival. The right. Sala Festival. Yes. Do you know what that means? Not exactly, but we'll, well find we'll out. Well, we'll find out a little bit later when Matthew Ives from the Unley Council will be joining us. Mm -hmm. And we, I have a, a thorn in my side to get off my chest. Can I help? Well, you can, but later on, <laughs> and I'm... Absolutely furious about this one, but first of, all, first of all, to make us all happy, here is the lovely Tom Gleghorn. Welcome Tom, to welcome to Adam. Welcome. Tom, is it inappropriate to ask you how old you are? 91. Congratulations. I know that it's, you've uh, only just turned 91 yeah. just a few weeks ago. Yeah, that's lovely. What do you attribute your long and healthy life to? Uh, I never thought about it. I... I um, just wake up and the day begins. And get on with life. And get on with life. But you've got on with life in some fantastic ways by creating some great art. And we'll have a look at that in a tick. But just tell us, did you start when you were a little kid drawing? How did, no, how did you no, become an artist? No, uh, no. Depressing child, you know. Uh, I'm so sorry and, for you. Yes, <laughs> I we know. make you happy? I know, yeah. Uh, it was a tough was, time, there, wasn't there it? Wasn't a, no, there wasn't a great deal of materials around. Uh, even school, I had one teacher school. My schoolroom was a veranda. Uh, but uh, I was fortunate enough because my, uh, my step-grandfather gave me a pocket knife, the shape of a fish, and I remember clearly it was made in Japan. And I uh, used this to carve birds and animals from roots of trees. Good gracious. I didn't start to... Do, to How old were you then, Tom? Sorry I, for interrupting. Oh, I'd be nine. Nine? Nine, okay. yeah. It's interesting you wouldn't give a nine-year-old a pocket knife anymore. <laughs> it's, well, no, you know, it's not so appropriate. Times, but, times have changed. Uh, yeah, but in a way, what a shame, because they'll never experience what you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then from pocket well, knife... I, well, I didn't, uh, I didn't start to, uh, to, to draw, really, until my early 20s, although... Uh, I served in a trade, engineering trade apprenticeship with a BHP in Port Waratah, Newcastle. So I had plenty of uh, drawing experience, or technical drawing experience. Mm. See, I worked on the first marine vessel, marine engine built in Australia, worked on the first marine turbine built in Australia. So there was a lot of design work there and I was responsible for a lot of the drafting. So oh, Gracious, so from that, because that's such fine... Mm -hmm meticulous yeah, work yes. to the style of art that you progressed into. Did yes. you start as a realistic painter? Yes. What yes. did you I, paint? I still, I still think I'm, I'm fairly realistic, although it's very hard for some of my paintings to discover that. Well, we'll have a look at a tick, but when, when you start to paint, you look at a blank canvas, where does the inspiration for the piece come from? Is it something you've seen or is it just an experience, an emotion? I'm a storyteller, a visual storyteller. I'm telling stories per meter of the canvas. Uh, events uh, seen, uh, um, influenced by music, uh, influenced by bird song, and just a, a whole lot of things. I think it, the, it just creates a visual picture yes, in your mind? Yes. You see, I, I've never had a formal lesson in my life. I'm completely self-taught. Um, is that a good thing, do you think? Oh, it just happens. Yes. I have a friend too. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, yeah. I have a friend in Sydney. He's the same, but he's mm. more abstract. Yeah. Um, but he is self-taught. Yeah. Um, and just goes out into the desert or to the outback. And, yeah. And it's just colours, splashes. It's beautiful work. Um, yeah, sorry. No, it's <laughs> I went off in a little yeah. tangent. No, but, but the reality is... Um, if you have this ability, it is, it's something born in you. When people ask about talent, mm. I usually say to them, I think talent is really the combination of genes of your parent that throw you whatever specific thing you have a yeah. expertise in doing and you just do it. You feel it. You yeah, just do it. That's, that's exactly what happened to me. Hmm. One day I didn't paint, the next day I did. Yeah. Interesting. What yeah. do you paint him with? What medium? All sorts. 
they have no specific medium. Okay. Well, let's have a look at some of Tom's art. So you've mm. got an understanding of what we're talking about. Um, here's an example, Tom. Tell us quickly about this. Well, this, this is a, a painting from Arkabar. On the edge of Arkabar, they have a, a, a running creek called Breakfast Time Creek, uh, and that is the, the burnt uh, sh uh, shrubbery or scrubs and the beginning of the, the uh, seepage of water, uh, morning light, uh, just look good. Takes and, on a whole new dimension when you actually understand what's yeah. behind it. Storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. Storytelling, yes, because we can now see that through your Visual eyes. Let's have a look at another. This is a floodplain of Kakadu. Uh, you can see the, the shower, of, shower of rain. Mm. Uh, the, because the colours up there, I, I suppose I like to think of that as my spiritual home. I've been going to Kakadu since 1964. I go every year. I've spent well, that amount of time, or that length of time, working. This and is, now for something completely different? Yeah. This is an earlier one. Uh, it was a prize winner in Sydney. Uh, it's called Drought. Uh, it's to do with the outback. Uh, just a feeling, feeling of dryness. Uh, common landscape turning into shapes, uh, shapes turning into a, a personal approach to the imagery of drought. It's about a drought, not of a drought. Mm. Right. Well, this is again. This is a stone country, uh, Kakadu, the edge of the the stone country. These marvelous uh, outcrops of what was once as the bottom of the sea. Uh, the, you have that sort of. Um, millions and millions of years in the formation of, of uh, rocks and stones and it's just uh, intrigued with the shapes of the, 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 the hills, or you put it that way. This is the spice market in Istanbul. Wow, that's great. I uh, love that. Just wandering through uh, the arcade in, the sp in the, what is the spice market, uh, seeing the colours of spices on a table. It looked good, and I wanted to make a, a souvenir painting, and that's it. It's magnificent. The colours are brilliant, aren't they? It's lovely. This is a, uh, just south of Alice Springs. Um, it's an, an old camel yard, a nondescript landscape, uh, typical of that area. It's very Australian, really, isn't it? Yes, it's just... I mean, these sort of things, these images intrigue me. Yeah. Mm. Um, a lot of them start off from complete reality in my drawings and then eventually they become into abstract, yeah. So do you paint every day? I did until about the last ten months. And do you still... But you still paint? You haven't stopped painting? Oh, no, no. Is it a... As you, as you work, do, is it a feeling of satisfaction? Is it a feeling of something you have to do? How do you feel? Why do you paint? After a lifetime of painting, uh, I would say it's an addiction with me. Uh, it's like smoking. I remember trying to give up smoking years ago. It was very, very difficult. I, so I've downsized now and I'm living in a, a new abode, a retirement living, uh, home of the ancients, I call it. <laughs> uh, but with your lovely wife? Yes, yes. oh yes. Uh, we're very happy there. We've only been there for about five months. So I'm gradually getting a, a garage in my uh, place there, mm. uh, turning it into a small studio. Yep. Oh, yes, you. I did a drawing for breakfast, as a matter of fact. You just never stop. It's brilliant. It's actually, for some people, when they have a skill like this, it's very hard to stop if for some reason they have to. Yeah. But really, if you don't have to stop, why wouldn't you keep doing it? But yeah. I have a friend... I plan to do this until I'm 110. <laughs> without... I have a friend who actually just took some art classes and she said it was so relaxing. She wants to continue to do she it. It's really relaxing. She, she should. Would... Well, well, that's the nice thing about the Sala Festival. And in a minute, we're going to come back because Tom has been in a way selected, I suppose, by the only council to be one of the judges mm. for people who are of mature age who are yep. doing exactly that, yeah. who are starting. perhaps either starting off or have been painting yeah. and not really had a chance to exhibit their mm. work. Will you stay with us, Tom? Sure. Yeah. And we'll be back with Matthew Ives in just a moment.
welcome back. Do you know, uh, just in the break, we were talking to Tom again, and you were talking about your friend in Sydney, the artist. Yes. Whose name is? Peter Griffin. And, and Tom said? <laughs> I taught him. <laughs> it's Brilliant. Like, well, we'll, it's, we'd yes. like to welcome Matthew Ives now. Matthew. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Matthew, your me. official title with the Only Council is? The Cultural Development Coordinator. And you're cultural? I'm incredibly cultural. Uh, Otherwise, a.k.a. the Fun Factory. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I describe now, myself as. you more or less <laughs> just discovered Tom. It's embarrassing, isn't it? It's, well, not really. It's it, rather embarrassing that I've just discovered Tom. So the story, the story goes is that I was looking around for a judge for um, an older artist award that the city of Umley is sponsoring. And uh, a mutual friend of ours, Chris Orchard, and um, Chris had said, oh, you do know that you've got the fabulous Tom Gleghorn who lives in the council area. He, he'd be perfect for this. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. And because I'm not originally from Adelaide, I have to say I wasn't aware of Tom's vast experience. And so I phoned Tom and I said, that's great. I, I love that you live in the Omni Council area. I'd love to tell you, he goes, can I stop you there? He says, I don't <laughs> live in the Omni Council area anymore. I said, that doesn't matter. You, you were, were there, there long, for long enough. 43 years. Yes, yes. there you go. So, that so that's qualifies. still qualified yes, in, I think in so. order to do it. Matthew, how important is it uh, for councils to be involved in the arts in this way? I think going back to my title of the cultural development is that we kind of consider that arts is a tool for cultural expression and, 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 and some of us in the field like to feel that, that culture is the all pervading important thing and I think that in local government we're very good at connecting with our communities mm -hmm. and that therefore the, the cultural uh, background, uh, whatever you like to describe that as of our people is incredibly important to us and, and we do find that the arts is by far and away the the most interesting and creative way that people can actually talk about their culture, whatever it be, whether it be what they do on a day-to-day -day basis or because of their ethnicity or whatever it is. So uh, we feel that it's very important and we're very lucky that within local government we have a, a network which is called Creative Communities Network. And um, I have to say that in South Australia we're, we're hosted that probably in local government we've got one of the strongest networks in Australia. Fantastic. For arts and culture. But that's yeah. really, that really relies very much on the people involved, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. The people like yourself who make these things happen. Oh, for sure. But also um, it's local democracy in action as well. It has to be with the support of the elected members and then it has to be, you know, to be the bureaucrat. It has to be the money that comes through the, the coffers as well that we're given to do. Um, sure, that I think it helps when there's people like me who come from an arts background who can act as the advocates both ways. I'd like to think that I'm an advocate for the arts to those who perhaps need more art in their life. But we're talking arts generally here, not just visual arts. We're talking about performing arts, all forms of arti artistic expression. Yes, and you're talking about contemporary art. So h here we are talking about Sala, but at the same time as we're doing this, uh, we're just about to roll out a project which is called Emerging Art Walls, where we're looking at street art. Right. So dare I say it, is I'm looking at artists at the other end of the age spectrum from Tom yeah. and engaging them and using their professional Well, as Tom experience. just said, though, before, um, during the Depression, not having the artist's materials and literally creating art out of roots of trees with mm. a pocket knife as a mm. kid, you know, now it's a spray can. And mm. I look at what these guys can do, and girls, can I say, I mean that collectively, is that what they can do with a spray can, with a swish and a swirl and this, that and the other, is, is, is utterly amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, take the graffiti out of it, but the street, the street art that we have in Adelaide also is held up as well. And, you know, one of our finest South Australian street artists is now the one who was known for the David Bowie mural that went viral. Did it? Oh, and that was, really? that was Jimmy James Cochran, Jimmy C. Um, who's now living in, in France and, and travels to Brazil and all over. So, you know, there's that yeah. constant thing, Tom talking about Peter Griffin, is that oh. there's that constant yeah. generations oh. of artists that are coming through. And, and, you know, that was interesting listening to Tom talking about different mediums, mm. for example. Mm. Have you ever used a spray can? 
Tom? No, no, no. I did a project with I did a project with older people both in the UK and did one recently in Unley where we teamed up together older residents yeah. with some younger people with a professional street can artist and we did um, some boards and they're now on the side of Unley Community Centre and the whole point was for them to share a common theme and to work together because it's so associated. And I've done a, did a lovely project also elsewhere where what we did was that we put the cans into the, the hands of older people. And it's hilarious. Just to because, see what they can, to see what they can do. Because the it's younger. hilarious because they, they do the whole thing is that they hold the can too mm. close, close and it dribbles. They hold it too far back and it dissipates into the air. Everywhere. But suddenly, <laughs> you know, these 70 and 80-year-olds were behaving like 15-year-olds and, and just having the best of times. That's yeah. lovely. Really, that's Every what story. life is about, finding the best of times. But explain the Sailor Festival. It's the South Australian Living Artists Festival, so I'm afraid those who've passed on are not qualified. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, it's right across South Australia. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe that it's the um, largest visual arts festival in the Southern Hemisphere. So there's not an equivalent to this in the other states? No. No, okay. this is totally unique. So here's an opportunity for local councils in the other states mm. of Australia to take heed. But Tom is a judge, you said. You've... You've so we've board. been doing, yeah, because we've been doing Sala, we've been doing Sala in Unley, as we like to call it, has been around now for 10 years. Sala's been around for 20, 15, 20, 20 years. And um, so because of that, and also we've launched an active ageing strategy as well for council. And so we thought it would be a good way to sponsor one of the um, awards that Sala gives out. Mm. And I think they have eight or nine. And I worked with Sala and we were talking about was there a gap in the market? And there's, you know, young and emerging mm. artists, there's contemporary art prizes. And so we looked at having an older artist award. Well, that's Great. the whole point. A lot of people who... Would you take up art if you ever retire? I would actually love to. I loved it at school. Um, haven't really had the opportunity to try again. But after, as I said, a friend of mine did some art classes recently and loved it. She said it was so relaxing. Mm. And I actually said to her, I'd like to come along sometime. There's an interesting correlation between aged people starting to paint and recapturing a lot of their their memories that have gone and there's some work being done at the moment on, in that area. So recently, I actually have recently attended an arts and health conference and they were talking about working um, with people with dementia yes. and they've also, I was listening to somebody in WA who's been doing a PhD on well-being and they've actually now got through actual scientific studies that they say that if you do more than two hours of art a week, your well-being is better than people who do less than that or none of that. And that's being done with a, like a, you know, a scientific mm, study. Mm, wow. I think the scientific study I saw is actually doing life drawing and how people had actually improved their cognitive skills because of that, because of the eye seeing and then trying to recreate that mm. on a piece of paper. Mm. Tom, um, in judging this, I know it hasn't happened yet for you, but what are you specifically looking for? Yeah, perhaps uh, originality, uh, creativity. Creating the story. Yeah, yeah. Is it in communicating a story, like, does everybody have to really see the art the same? No, oh, no. No. Uh, a painting should reveal its secrets if you, if you look at it. A lot of people pass it by so quickly. You, you look at a, a work of art as... Uh, is an adventure, visual adventure in itself. And when people look at art for their lounge room and they want it to blend in with the lounge suite and the carpet and the curtains, what's your opinion of that? There's a place for it. There's a place for it. OK. So what you're really saying is it, uh, um, beauty, if you like, or the art that you enjoy is really about the individual and yes. how it yeah. communicates through yeah. their eyes into their brain and the emotion that creates? Exactly. Am I putting words in your mouth? No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are a bit, but it's, I'm agreeing with what you're saying because that saves me saying it. <laughs> <laughs> and well at 91, said. you're being economical? Is <laughs> yes, exactly, yeah. Matthew, where do you see this sort of... Um, program really going. Is it something that will continue to expand? Yes, I think so, because uh, I do believe that the arts festivals, as there is an organisation which is called 
arts festivals Adelaide and one of the things that they're looking at the 10 major festivals are looking at developing a aging arts strategy as well so mm -hmm. I think that obviously with the constant talk that you hear about that we're going to have more and more older people and the baby boom is coming through mm -hmm. it does mean that people are going to look at more creative solutions I think for their life that they're not going to be the people who are going to rock up at bingos and just want to be have a scone shoved down their throat I think that you know we've got a, a changing economy as well and people are going to be looking for those different pursuits mm -hmm. to be able to both be um, as an audience but I think more importantly as a participant as yeah. well and people are going to look to diversify more than perhaps the experiences mm. of older people in the past. Oh. Great, and we were talking before that the winners of um, Sala, you're actually <laughs> lovely. We're just talking as, as we were preparing for this. Uh, they'll be on rubbish bins, which is a perfect place to engage with local people to discover... Who's uh, done what on their bin. Exactly. Because yeah. we all use public bins. Well, and there's, there's going to be an exclusive, uh, we're also having coming up with some exclusive stickers oh. that people will be able to put on the sides of their personal bins as well. That's a, Brilliant. that's an art prize that we've done mm -hmm. as well. So, yes, it's been a bit of a year yeah. for a lot of visual <laughs> arts. So much more, yeah, Matthew. If you hear of more, please let us know yes. because we'd love to talk more. Tom, thank you so thank much you. for being it's been part lovely of meeting. our thank conversation. You Matthew, yeah. thank you for that information. Yeah. Thank you for inviting And us. we'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back. We are. We're back. We are. But again, in the break, we were. Ju Tom just said. Would you just explain to us what you just said while we were having a commercial break? No, I was just mentioning the collect uh, council's collection in Sydney, Rockdale Council, around about 1954-55, had this art award, uh, a sum of money. I think it was a hundred guineas, if I remember rightly, <laughs> uh, an art prize. Uh, and uh, the first prize, I, I actually won it. You won the first one. Won, won the first one. But over the years, they have built up a rather a very, very fine collection. Um, the, the paintings become the property of the council, and they have some of the top names in Australian painters today. As, those, fact, those your paintings pain, as your paintings are all over Australia. Yeah. Yes. yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. It really is meeting a yeah. true living treasure. Absolutely. Not you, Matthew, oh, sorry. Oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> but you're a nice bloke. In time. <laughs> exactly. And if you'd like to find out more about what we've been talking about, we'll leave some information on Facebook about the Sala Festival and also about Tom, and you can actually... Google Tom, or you can just check out his website for a whole lot more of his art. Yes. Now, I have a thorn in my side. Yes, you said. Listen. It must be very you know, uncomfortable. You know, you're sitting... At, it is, it is, it really is. You're sitting at home and you get phone calls from overseas trying to sell you different energy programs or all sorts of stuff. And I saw on a television program somebody talking about, oh, if you just check out a do not call register... Yes. So I did... Google and check out a do not call register. I'm registered not to call. Right, which at seems simple enough. It does. At quarter to ten one evening, quarter to ten, 9.45, I got a phone call from a very well-spoken man and he went through all of the details I'd left to check that I'd actually you left do. them. Yeah. Now, most people would think, fantastic, it's working. Government policies are in place, mm. working They're beautifully. Listening to me after all. But my brain said, the, the way he was going through the questions, I thought, there's got to be a cost for this. $69 a year to have yourself deregistered. That seems wrong. That I really think is outrageous. And if you've done that, or if you're thinking of doing it, before you take on anything, even if it happens to come through a Telstra website or a government website or any of the other... Check how much it's going to cost check you. Check how much those things are going to cost you. Yes, that's our advice and that's... the thorn in my side this week. <laughs> and it just shows <laughs> you only how... Only one. No, well, <laughs> there's more, start. but we only have time for one. But it just shows how, even in things that you trust, you need to be very savvy in today's world oh. and just... Double check stuff out. So until next time we see you on our time. Please take care. And keep yourself nice till then. Bye. Bye.